March Madness continues as the PH and the U.S. markets continue to rally after the U.S. Fed kept rates steady and scheduled rate cuts remained at three this year. So what has changed? Let's discuss. My name is Dan Slim and welcome to another episode of Monday Market Outlook. So although the inflation announcement for the Philippines is not due until April 5, the BSP already announced their estimates for inflation to quicken to 3.9% due to base effects. While it is up from the 3.4% last February, it's at least still within the 2-4% to target range of the BSP. The base effect here is due to the steep decline here in March, right? So remember, we're comparing it year on year. So the next March reading here will be compared to a lower base. As we continue to measure inflation against a lower base until July, this could result into higher readings in the following months. So the concern here also that we need to watch out for is the rice situation again as Rice especially uh, comprises around 18% of the inflation basket. Notice how rice inventory has gone down by a whopping 25% on preliminary estimates in just one month. So the low supply here can result into higher rice prices considering El Nino may kick in later in the year now that Pagasa has already declared the start of the dry season. But some good news as the national government continues to see revenue collection grow more than government spending. Revenue grew by 21% while expenditures grew by only 10%. So we have a surplus. But of course, some may argue that the government may not be spending enough to support economic growth or to help the economy grow. Because, you know, as, as you grow the economy, infrastructure needs to support that growth remember that the philippines will grow like what like five percent this year people are going to use more electricity more cars are going to be bought more cars will be in the roads you have to expand your road network you have to expand your electrical capacity and if the government is not spending to expand that infrastructure we will have worse traffic uh, moving forward, right? So, on to some earnings. So, AP posted their full year 2023 net income at 33.1 billion, which is up 27% in line with expectations. But looking at AP's chart, though, AP continues to sell off after the dividend X date. Again, I usually wait two weeks after the X date and observe price action. A couple of levels we want to monitor here 36 and 35, see how it reacts. To those levels before deciding if we want to enter AP. Okay, earlier last week, Bloomberry announced their settlement with Global Gaming. The resolution here is for SPI, which is a subsidiary of Bloomberry, to buy back GGAM shares at around 18.32 pesos per share. This caused Bloomberry to drop almost 10% in one day. So we've actually been looking for some opportunities to buy into Bloom, but I would have preferred it to go at like probably at the 10 peso level. The concern here is that the buyback will reduce the public float of Bloomberry from 37% to around 30%, even maybe lower than that. So this could have a, an effect on its weighting in the index and thus the reaction here. Consider getting a 10 or maybe 10.04 if it manages to hold that support. Finally, DigiPlus reporting unstoppable earnings growing 600%. Revenue surged 300% to 27.3 billion with a full year net income of around 4 billion. In the fourth quarter alone, a net profit soared 392% to 2 billion. Okay, so think about this. I think this 2 billion in the fourth quarter can be easily replicated in the succeeding quarters. So if we are to assume that the next quarters for 2024, they will earn 2 billion per quarter, that's going to be an 8 billion revenue for DG Plus this year. At those earnings plus could maybe have additional 15 to 25% more room to grow. So if we look at the chart, the stock went parabolic the past couple of weeks. Dividends were also announced 
at 18 cents per share. At this point, I would just recommend to buy on pullbacks, maybe at around 10. Given the growth potential here, uh, there might be some recalculations and upgrades, maybe 12 to 13 could be at a possible price target. So a quick word on technical and momentum trading here. Some people have told me that this is already overbought. Yes, but you know, remember that we always have to look at price action first. Plus has been overbought for what? More than two weeks. Remember that these are called indicators for a reason. They are just indicative of what might happen in contrast to something that's more definitive. So let's look at the PSEI charts. We managed to bounce off of this FTSE Friday and as expected, we did a consolidation here before reacting to the FOMC meeting on Thursday which managed to kick the markets back in gear towards the week ending in the positive despite this Friday sell-off. Now, if we zoom into the one-hour charts, we can clearly see the index maintaining its movement along this range, up and down, up and down. And we will most likely continue to do so until a major catalyst happens, which we're not really expecting coming into this week as we enter into the Holy Week break. Now, the up and downs here are basically a mix of some index issues, some going up, and some going down so let's take a look at some charts ac here is one of the losers look at that massive sell-off it has now hit our 630 level here if it breaks down from that level we have 600 and 580 level which is actually a an interesting level to get some ac shares if it does Ali also with a sell-off. Again, with a strong momentum like this, we wait for some kind of basing structure before we go in. Uh, this support needs to hold. If not, we'll go down to 29.90 and maybe 26.70 even. No? And look at URC also dipping all the way down below 100 before recovering to 103. Again, as I reiterated, do not add to your losers. You may think you're buying at the bottom, but look look here. Some people thought they were buying at the bottom here. It went down. Some people thought they were buying at the bottom here. It went down. Now, there's a new bottom, right? So fundamentals as of this moment for URC, still not looking good. So when people ask me if it's a good time to buy URC, in my opinion, let's wait for better fundamentals and a better looking chart. Uh, or maybe, you know, just get Monday. Now, some charts I want to highlight, RCR looking good so far. We did identify a couple of support zones. We have 520 and 508. Five, at 508, the yield here is an attractive 7.7%. RCR earnings came in last week in line with expectations. So my main concern here is that uh, we've entered into this price channel. And if we look at the one hour time frames, Right? We can see that RCR has been moving along this resistance and support zone. So it's now headed towards resistance. Ideally, we would like to see RCR break out here and then retest this support. That would be the ideal scenario because if it doesn't break out here, what's most likely to happen? It will just go down again to this price channel and our next level here is the 0.618 Fibonacci which is 4.96. Let's go to the daily charts and turn on the EMAs. This is why the 20-day EMA is such an important moving average, right? See how it is support and now it's resistance. What is happening right now with RCR? We are now in a convergence point, right? This is the 20 EMA resistance. We have the 38 Fib we have the trend line resistance here. So this is a very strong resistance. If it breaks out of there, then that means there is momentum and there's strength in the breakout. And if it doesn't, then we go down to 495. So hopefully the rally here continues and we break out for RCR, right? Now, if you look at SMPH here, this would be a good ideal scenario so far, right? Now, if we look at the one hour charts, see, how it has broken out of this trend line and then we see a retest here. So two things can happen. It can bounce off, preferably after it bounces off, it clears this resistance area 
all the way to 34.15 because if it breaks down here, then this becomes a dead cat bounce or a fake out. Wait for its reaction to this level here and if it bounces off of here, this could be a good entry for SMPH. CREIT coming out with their dividends declaration at 5.4 cents, which is 10% up from their previous dividend of 0.49. We mentioned last week that we didn't have enough opportunities to buy CREIT and at 263, this could be a good opportunity and watch its reaction. The next day it held there, went up a bit. Congratulations if you were able to get CREIT shares during this breakdown. So more dividend news. SEC also declaring their dividends at 3.5% with an X date of April 8. So good news to SEC holders. How did we play this before? In the past two trades, we bought during the dip, we sold before the X date. We actually didn't get the dividends here. But look at the returns here. If you bought at this level and sold here, you could have gotten 29%. Now at this point, if you bought at this level, and you're planning to sell here, that's already a 25% gain. So we may see SEC continue this rally and maybe reach 36.20 or 37. So do we sell or do we keep the dividend? It's hard to answer that because look, if you've been buying SEC at 28, 29, and so far in the past two years, you've gotten 350, 350, 350, 350 here, you've gotten like 14 pesos. So your average price is 28, 29 and a dividend of 14 pesos. That's that's around 50% gain for you in the past two years just by holding SEC. So there are two strategies here. You hold a 28 or you buy and sell. Either way, you would have earned almost the same yield. And you know, by doing buy and sell, you probably made your broker rich. So again, to answer that question really depends on your strategy. And as you can see here, each strategy also works as long as you stay consistent. So the question here again is whether SEC can give the same dividends at 350 moving forward because remember, cold prices are declining. And again, remember, we asked the same question in October. Can SEC give the same dividends despite declining cold prices? Apparently, they can. So we'll see. Let's go to the global markets. So the March F FOMC finally happened where the Fed's inflation story hasn't really changed. What this basically means is that while we are still moving towards the 2% target inflation rate, of course, the road going to 2% will have some bumps along the way. So the latest inflation data coming in hotter than expected was not a big concern for the Fed. And while they were very consistent about the number of rate cuts, and the target inflation rate, there are a lot of changes in some of the projections. We have GDP projections in 2024 revised to 2.1%. So they're expecting the U.S. economy to actually grow faster than previously expected and the unemployment rate to be lower than previously expected at 4%. PCE remains the same while core PCE uh, the Fed is accepting a little bit more leeway at 2.6% compared to 24 So what remains consistent really is that the federal funds rate is targeted to be at 4.6% by the end of the year. And if we look at the dot plot, which represents the votes of the Fed chairs, we see that a majority of the Fed chairs are in favor of the terminal rate being at 4.6%, which they have been very consistent on in their messaging and the takeaway from the FOMC meeting really here is that they are expecting the economy to be strong while inflation continues to go down to their target level at 2%. This narrative now is fueling the no landing scenario. And if we look at the chart here, there is a dramatic increase in the belief that there will be no landing at all. And the hardliners for, for a hard landing have dwindled down to 11%. Goldman Sachs also upgrading their growth forecast for 2024 and this gave the markets a cause for celebration after the FOMC meeting. So let's look at the charts. The S&P 500 breaking out of this resistance here to reach a new all-time high of around 5,260 plus before settling back along the 5,230 level, right? So if we look at the one hour charts, you can see here the resistance along this 5,187 and a breakout 
last Wednesday after the FOMC meetings. So what is next for the S&P 500? At this point, we've detached too much from the 20-day moving average. So going back to the daily charts, we can see we we pulled out of the 20-day moving averages. Last week, we said that as long as the 20-day EMA holds here, the trend is still intact and we pulled away again. What happens during large run-ups like this is that we tend to enter into a consolidation sideways. See, a large run-up consolidation, a large run-up consolidation here. So we may see a consolidation here or even a pullback to the 20-day EMA as we enter this week. Uh, how far can we still go? This whole no landing scenario has gotten the markets in, in a risk-on mode. And if we look at the past risk levels, it looks like there is still room for the markets for more risk-taking moving forward. What's driving the U.S. economy right now? Is it debt? Remember that in our previous chart, credit card debt has risen to more than 1.1 trillion. And if we take a look at where consumer spending is happening, credit card spending has increased to 1.1%. Airlines, lodging, entertainment, clothing, furniture, department store taking a hit, even online electronics, while home improvement has improved. Transit has steadily grown and we have online retail and credit card debt also going up. For this week, at least in the U.S., GDP growth rate will be announced on Thursday morning in the U.S., evening here. The Fed Supercorp PCE reading will come out on Friday. Uh, again, the U.S. markets will be on a shortened trading week as they celebrate Holy Friday. In the meantime, let's enjoy the gains that we've had so far. Always look for leaders in stocks as we expect these companies to lead this rally. We will take a break next week and we will resume our Monday market outlook on April 7. In the meantime, please like this video if you found the information useful. Please subscribe to the channel for more updates. And again, remember that equities trading, equities investment has risk. So manage your risk accordingly. Uh, good luck on your trades and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.